So you want all the cool features of your favorite big brand keyboard, but not the ubiquitous and boring cherry reds, browns, or blues. Not in the mood for those radley stabs either? You've come to the right place. I have a great solution for you. An awesome sleeper keyboard. Stick around as we transform a mediocre Logitech G512 Carbon into a beast in disguise. Let's get this sleeper build cracking. I'm Craw. Thanks for checking out the channel. If you're new, thanks for stopping by. If it's a return trip, thanks for coming back. Make sure you hit that sub and ring the bell so you don't miss future content. Be sure to leave a comment let me know you're finding value and what kind of things you'd like to see. And without further ado, let's roll. To start this project, we're going to need a keyboard to mod. I'll be using the Logitech G512 Carbon. You also need a soldering iron, a desoldering iron, your new switches and stabilizers, and a little bit of patience. As always, I'll leave links to all the things featured in this video. If you're planning on lubing switches and lubing and modding your stabs, now's the time to get that out of the way. I chose Everglide Panda stabilizers and went ahead and clipped and lubed them. I also chose Everglide Aqua switches. They're pre-lubed and linear, so I thought they'd be perfect for a keyboard that's mostly used for gaming. If you haven't modded stabs or lubed switches before, I'll post links to videos on both of those processes. Now that's out of the way, let's get our keyboard apart. First we'll take all the keycaps off and set them aside. Next, search out and remove the screws so we can split the case. There's a chance some of the screws will be under the rubber pads on the bottom and also some under the keycaps on top. Once the case is opened, if it's easier to work with, you can remove the cord also. You need to be able to comfortably work on the bottom of the PCB. Now we remove the old switches. Game on! Grab your preferred desoldering setup and let's do this. I'll be using an electric desoldering tool I grabbed from Amazon. It's a pretty straightforward method for desoldering switches. Heat up the tool, press the plunger. Hold it against the solder. When the solder melts, release the plunger. Just remember to empty the tool every so often or you'll shoot molten solder out, and that's not good. Repeat the process until all the switches are desoldered. Once that's done, you can use a switch puller to remove the switches from the plate. When you're removing the switches, if you encounter resistance, Check that the solder was fully removed. If you force the switches out, you can damage the solder pads, and that adds extra repairs. Once all the switches are out, remove the old stabilizers. Now we should be prepared to begin assembly. As I mentioned, I took care of modding the new stabilizers on the front side, so it's just a matter of band-aid modding the board and installing the new stabilizers. I had to use two of the original stabilizer bars as Logitech feels the need to use some non-standard key sizes. Stabs are in, now we install our switches. Once the switches are all installed, we can flip over the PCB to access the bottom side and the legs will be soldering. Hope your iron's hot because it's time to go. Hold the tip of the iron between the pad and the leg and add solder. Take your time. Once it's all soldered, reattach the cord if you chose to remove it. Now we want to plug into our computer and test all the switches before we completely reassemble it. This will make it tons easier if you have to redo any solder. This process best with a second keyboard if you have one around, otherwise you'll be testing your skills typing with no legends and that can be quite challenging. Just head over to KeyboardTester.com and use the online service to verify all your switches are working properly. Now that we know our switches work, we can put all the screws back into the keyboard and put the keycaps back on. If you want to have fun, try putting the caps back on without a reference. Not really. It's much easier to just look online, but it's a simple thing that amuses me. All done. Time for a sound test. See how it all feels. Wow, what a difference and a great way to breathe new life into an old keyboard. 
What a fun project. I was really happy with the results, and I don't think I could have asked for a better outcome. This project was inspired by one of the hosts of the PCMR Cast podcast, my man Jonesy. He loves his keyboard and all of its macro goodness and familiarity, so I wanted to find a way for him to keep what he loves and experience custom switches and stabilizers too. Pretty sure this is the remedy. Since we're on the topic, if you're looking for a podcast for PC gaming enthusiasts, by PC gaming enthusiasts, this is the show for you. They have weekly episodes and it's always entertaining. Can't recommend it enough. They're also an extremely active and friendly Discord. For more details, check out PCMRcast.com. There it is, another fun project in the books. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you got some value out of this. If you did, make sure you drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss future projects. Leave a comment about your keyboard and let me know what you'd like to see next. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing a t-shirt with an Ewok on it, you're going to have to go over to the PCMRcast Discord, at Jonesy, and ask him about it. He'll probably respond with, Enthu! Stay chill.